for tuning in to Buckeye TV News. I'm Caitlin Deardorff. And I'm Andre Santacara. Over the years, there has been a huge debate on what the legal drinking age should be. The issue continues to be prevalent among college students here at Ohio State. Our Pat Hallbecker caught up with some students at the Union to get their opinions. For as long as many of us can remember, there have been many debates on the drinking age in the United States. Some feel the drinking age of 21 is too high, while others feel it's just right. We went to the Student Union to ask students how they felt about the drinking age. Do you think the drinking age should be changed? Yes, I do. What age do you think the drinking age should be changed to? Uh, probably 18. I think it's good where it's at right now. I mean, the majority of people don't listen to it anyway, so it doesn't really make that big of a difference. One thing both sides could agree on is that no matter what the law says, people of all ages are drinking. I mean, people already drink by freshman year now in high school, and I think that if you're responsible to be counted as an adult, you should be able to drink too. What would any great American debate be without views that are indifferent? I'm not. I, I'm neither for nor against uh, the drinking the drinking age being changed. I think it's fine that it's 21. I think it's understandable that um, that it should be 21, and and that people and that the more mature people should be allowed to make the decisions in order to drink or not. One argument for lowering the drinking age brought up the fact that draft age is still 18. If you're allowed to fight for your country, you're technically an adult. You should be able to drink. Some, however, take the same argument from a different stance. I actually think the draft age should be changed um, to 21. With drinking comes responsibility. Some say with responsibility should come being able to drink. If you have enough responsibility to get married, you should have enough responsibility to handle a few drinks legally. In the end, one of the most prominent reasons for not lowering the drinking age comes down to maturity. I don't know if people are mature enough to handle it if it was younger. So, I mean, people aren't mature enough to handle it when it's 21. Although there are many opinions on the topic, for now the drinking age will stay at 21. For Buckeye TV News, I'm Pat Hallbecker. Thanks, Pat. There's one place connected with late night drinking, and that's White Castle. Andrew Zook brings us a story on what students really think about those famous little sliders. How many years do you think White Castle has been in business? 26. Hundreds of years. <laughs> 72? Believe it or not, White Castle System Inc. is celebrating its 19th birthday as a company this year, having first opened its doors in 1921. This raises the question, what do Ohio State students really feel about eating those little sliders? Um, it's great. <laughs> it's bloody good in uh, Thanksgiving stuffing. Um, it tastes pretty good at first, but then by about the third burger, you're like, why am I eating this? the next morning you decide it was a bad decision. Um, I'm not, I don't really like White Castle. I think their food's greasy and their hamburgers are simply a burger and onions. After 90 years of business, White Castle is still going strong with over 400 restaurants, four divisions, and the same burger that started it all. Uh, I give it a simple slider, you know, it's, it's the original maybe. It has expanded its menu to include breakfast foods, fish nibblers, chicken rings, milkshakes, coffee, and other variations of the original slider. They have really unique options compared to a lot of other fast food restaurants. Could you elaborate on that? I mean they have jalapeno burgers and stuff like that that no one else really sells. It's not what I crave. Whether you love White Castle's little sliders or if you can't stand to look at them, the first fast food hamburger restaurant ever celebrates its 90th year of business. For Buckeye TV, I'm Andrew Zuck. Another fad gaining popularity is online dating. Buckeye TV's Gene Weller has more on the growing online dating scene. Many students have grown tired of the bar and party scene when looking for a genuine relationship, so they have in turn to an increasingly popular type of dating, online dating. We asked OSU students what they think of online dating. I of online dating dates and they have all gone so well and they, they just match me so well with the type of people that I want to be around. My opinion of online dating is, you know, I'm more of a person that likes to meet somebody, um, not through the internet, so I'm not all for it. It's, like I said, it's a great way to meet people outside of your traditional um, day of life, and you can kind of nail down more what you want. But just how reliable are these websites? Students weigh the risks of using the internet to find their match. I'd say along with the advantages, the disadvantages are um, maybe some some fibs and and not solid truths. I've lied once on my online day profile just as like this was a joke, but um, I just stated things like I was a model and. So with the risks mentioned, why are students turning to the web for dating? So like 
it just puts you one step ahead of the game and gives you like somebody that is compatible with yourself. Be, um, I guess, more assertive in saying what you want and what you're looking for and not necessarily feeling bad for, not necessarily turning down people, but kind of be like, oh, you know, these are kind of more the people that I'm looking for. College students have different opinions about online dating, but there's no doubt that it's become increasingly popular. I'm Jean Weller reporting from Buckeye TV. Ever wonder who the strongest man on campus is? Now there's an easy way to find out. Joey Latozo brings us a story on the most fit Buckeye competition. Hi, I'm Joey Latozo, and I'm here to speak with the Exercise Science Club about the most fit Buckeye competition that'll be held this spring. So let's go take a look. So the most fit Buckeye competition is about getting kids more active at the university and uh, it's a collaboration between the Ohio State Exercise Science Club and our faculty and it's a, a first year competition and we hope to make it an annual event. So the competition is looking at all components of uh, health and fitness including strength, flexibility, speed, endurance and it's really almost a CrossFit style competition obstacle course so you can have tire flips, jumping over hurdles, sprinting, crawling under army nets, it's a whole bunch of things. And you also get a chance to win an iPad if you're the most fit Buckeye. We really wanted to make an event that reached out to all sorts of students, so not just the people that like to lift weights, not just people that like to run a lot, but really bring everybody together to show that it takes more than just one specialty to be a really fit individual, which is really what our major's about. Students can sign up. Um, at the Cardio Canyon desk at the RPAC from 5 to 9, Monday through Friday, every night of the week. Thanks to the Exercise Science Club for that great information. I'm Joey Latozo, back to you at Buckeye TV. Thanks, Joey. Coming up, we find out how students are really stepping up to the plate for charity. And later, is it really legal to get high? Stay tuned. <laughs> 